Now, the, what we're going to do is we're going to use a package, a very, very good, a very, very nice package called React Native Encrypted Storage. Come down, come down here. This beautiful package right here. And we need a, there are a few steps that we need to do to actually install it. So first we need to npm install. So come over here to our app, which may or may not still have open, but make sure again that it is indeed in your app. npm install. So we're going to use this package so that we can store our credentials in a secure manner. See, if we just store them locally as a part of a normal local storage, you know, that you can you know, use. So anyway, that's not going to be secure. That's, that's very bad, you know. But by using this package, it's going to allow us to store it in the keychain. See, wrap it around shared preferences and keychain to provide secure alternative to async storage. That's exactly why we're using this. So when we stash a variable, if we stash a token, we stash user login, anything like that, it's going to be protected. It's going to be stored in the, the keychain, which is you know like an encrypted store that only your app can access. You can't, you know, no one else is going to be able to look at, look at it. So one more thing we need we need to do. See, we're we're well above this uh, React Native version. I think it's uh, 0.72, 0.73, something like that. Now, uh, and if you're watching in the future, you should almost certainly be watching. Uh, it should almost certainly be well above this. So we're going to npx install, we need a pod install for iOS. We need to run that as well. Success. And to, actually, to use it, there's instructions here. And if you want to you know, look into a little bit more detail. We're going to basically do pretty much everything that's here. We're going to create our own little mini secure library uh, or a set of functions that we can use to you know, call these secure functions. So we're going to call this, we're going to create a new file here, sorry, in core and call it secure.js and we're going to create a bunch of different functions. Actually, yeah, we'll just rewrite them. So we're going to import our encrypted storage. Ooh. Mm, not with all this extra garbage. We're gonna not all that. So install that, and then we're going to create an asynchronous function. We're going to use this to set a value. So this is by wrapping it up in this way. It's just going to make it a lot easier to use. Otherwise, we're going to have to call, uh, you know, try await. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to type out all this each time. It's much easier if we can just go secure dot set and then pass our object, and we'll be fine. And we need to stringify our object because we can only store strings. Uh, we can't actually store a dictionary in its you know, natural state. And then if there's, if there's any sort of error, we're going to log that out so we can see what's, you know, what's going on. And copy this. We'll make something very similar for get. Get item for key. And do this. And then if our data exists, sorry. So if it looks for something and it can't find it, it's going to be undefined. So if it's not undefined, we're going to return our past data. And if not, it's just going to return, it's going to return nothing because it, yeah, we don't need to do anything more here. And then when we want to remove an item or delete it, we can just call this function. 
And by creating these functions, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be really easy for us. We're never going to have to come back to this again. We're just going to be able to go secure.set, secure.get, secure.remove, whatever. Remove item for key. Remove this. Uh, this should be get. And if there's an error, we want to print that out. And then the last one is is wipe. Uh, wipe. So if we want to wipe out everything, we don't need to give it a key. It'll wipe out all of our keys for this application. This. So this is we don't have to worry about individual um, you know, keys or anything like that. Done. And then we're just going to export a dictionary of functions so that we can import secure, export default, and then we're going to export set get remove wipe. Just like that. And trust me, this is a, it's a pattern that I like. So we'll save that and then we're going to come over to our global and we're going to update our login function. And we're not just going to pass the user, we're also going to pass the cred credentials that the user credentials that the user used to log in. And then we're going to stash them securely. So import secure from secure. And then we're, going to, we're just going to go secure.set the key of credentials and then credentials credentials that's it that's all we're going to need to do and then when we log out we're going to go secure dot wipe we're just going to wipe out every doesn't matter we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to leave anything left over for when a new user logs in when we log out we're just going to wipe everything and that's what i meant when i said it's going to be that simple to stash our credentials and now we can set, remember how, oh, sorry, we need to update this login function now. So sign in, we're going to pass const cred credentials, we're just going to create a dictionary here, it's going to be username, username. Password. And then when we log in, we're going to pass that along with. And one error I just noticed is when we pass our user here, global, we expect a user. We're not passing a user, we're passing the entire packet. So we need to go dot user. And we need to do the same thing on our sign up. So I'm going to come over here, create some credentials, and this is going to be password one because yeah, we, we have two passwords here. There's no password without a number. And then credentials dot user. user. And that way, we're actually going to stash our credentials. So now every time we log in, we're going to be storing the correct, you know, user info. And now you may be asking yourself, why did we do that? You know, we need, you know, huh. Okay, now we've stashed our credentials and we can use them to log in again when the user opens the app for the first time. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hit the login endpoint again um, using stored credentials. And so that way your user will never have to essentially re-log in. Once they're logged in, as long as they're password and username or their credentials are secure you know unless they're forced to be changed every three months or something like that whatever scheme you want to use but we can store them correctly uh, so we can, we can store them securely using this method um react native encrypted storage is undefined let's reload that ah i think we need to rerun our application because we did a a pod install but i'll just check and make sure that there's nothing that we've left out i don't think so so what we need to do is close 
Ah, uh, we can worry about everything. We just need to go back to our roots and go make run. And that's going to rerun our Metro server. It may not just, it may, sometimes when you install a package, it needs to re, re, actually be reloaded fully before it will recognize the package that you just installed. So that will take just a moment. Alrighty, looks good. Sign in and sign up. And we're passing our user, not just our data. Now let's see if we can log in. Easy. Yo! Yeah. So now that we've done that, we can replace our initialized with an initialize, initialized, yeah, whatever, from use globe. So we can we can we can do some logging in from here from our globe from our use global global. We'll create a function that will be called straight away when we when we open the app for the first time essentially, or when we when when we open the app. So we're going to a new section now. Our initialization. And with an initial initialized initialized initially set to false. And we're going to it's going to be an init function. And it's going to contain async functions. So it's it itself is going to have to be an asynchronous function. And first we're going to check if there are any credentials. Easy. We could use promises, but I prefer to do it this way. Okay, if credentials returns something truthy, which it will if it returns anything at all, or anything of value, then we're going to Re-authenticate. We're going to create an authentication function. Actually, no. We're just going to add some interesting stuff to this function here. So, if there are credentials, we want to create a request with our API that we have here. We want to basically create the same. We want to do the same. We want to take all this, our API, and we want to stick it in here. Now, this is a lot of extra junk which we don't really want. How about we just get rid of this catch altogether? And then get rid of this. We need to import our API. And then that's going to sign in. We don't need that. And we get rid of this for now. So this is going to be our credentials dot username. Credentials dot password. And we're gonna have to put this. We're gonna we're gonna do an await, so we have to put this in a try try catch. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna get rid of this as well. We're gonna go const response equals await. And if there's an error. To go log that out, and we're going to try and log in. So we're going to take this. We yeah. So if it works, we're going to user equals response dot data dot user. Now, if it doesn't work, then this will be rubbish. Actually, we're going to make sure that it is a correct response. So we're going to go if the response dot status is not equal to two hundred, which we expect it to be, then we're going to throw and throw that error. But if not, then we're going to proceed. 
and we're going to update our user and then we're going to return because we don't want to do anything else. But if all that fails or if that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't reach the return for whatever reason, then our default, actually we're also going to set in initialized to true. And then return and then if that doesn't work for whatever reason we're going to set initialize to true at the end of this regardless so no matter what happens we're going to say yep initialize is equal to true and this is a messy function this is a you know, but it's not too bad so now we have that what we can do is we can go to our app and we can replace our initialized with a new one Move that. Now our initialize comes from our use global, and it's not being our our initialize function is that is not being set at all. It's not being called. Sorry, and we need to call that in here. And we're going to create a use effect that calls only once at the beginning, and then we're going to fetch our initialize or our init function. And we're going to call in it inside here. Yeah, can you see that worked? That did exactly what we wanted because we we're logged in on the iOS simulator, but we're not logged in here. So we'll refresh it again, and same thing should happen. See, it checks for a bit. That's exactly what we want. So we have that nice uh, splash that we created, and it displays for a second. And then while it's trying to figure out if the user has been logged in or not or whatever, what it should do. And then once it's figured that out, it either displays the login page if you're not logged in or it, it jumps you straight into your, uh, you know, your home view, your tab view here. And that's great. That's exactly what we want. And now every time we're going to be in here, we're going to have that user object that we can access. So we can fill this with real you know, information. So first we're going to change the name. That's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, get rid of I'm going to come here and we're going to go const user equal use global. User. And then we can user.username. User.name. Should change from, yep, yeah, that's exactly what we hope to see. And let's give a little space. Yeah, we should have put margin bottom. And now we have this gives a little bit of space between yeah, these two pieces of text. And now we're logging in and we're displaying our correct information. The our actual username is being used from here. It's grabbing this, this piece of information here, this piece of information here, and it's displaying what we expect to see in our profile view. And then we can log out. And then when we refresh, that should have wiped everything. So you should come back here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is great. Like this is, this is it's coming together now. now. I know it's been a long slog and you know, you're tired and oh, you know, it's been like four hours, bro. I get it. It sucks, but stick with it. Stick with me, put your trust in me, your sovereign, and I will make sure that you have the best time ever. I'll make sure that you'll be glad with yourself if you stick through it to the end. Trust me.